Teacher talking points. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. And it's our goal to bring you some information as you prepare for Sunday. And this Sunday in this video is all about October 11, 2020. And we are in the midst of our growth series. We are week three. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Josh has been preaching and helping us out as we talked about truth last week and love and how we are really called to live a different type of life than the world around us. And that is countercultural, but we know that you can do it because you are empowered with the Holy Spirit. So what are some key points that we want you to talk to your class about? Once you talk with your small group about, jump online and put on your Beats headphones like a lady in our video. I thought that was pretty cool. She's silver haired with red Beats. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. That's way to go. Uh, but they she, got all the money. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> she's, she's actually a DJ. It's DJ Granny. Yeah, DJ Granny. DJ Granny yes. on there. So uh, we are glad that you are tuning in and we want you to connect. And we also want you to let us know how we can help you. If you have specific questions, if you have comments, if you have ideas, well, we want to hear them. And if you'd like to sponsor this segment. That's right. Please. We'd like this segment to be sponsored by two, uh, to two organizations. If you would call us and let us know, you can purchase a spot for your entry-level low price of $5 a minute. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. $5 a minute. All right. And uh, we will give you the entire minute. And if you want us to be quiet, this episode might run about 13 minutes. And so that's... Yeah. Uh, 70 something dollars. I don't know how much that is. 13 times 5, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 and 6, so 65 dollars. Wait, you want us to just stand here for 13 minutes while a sponsor? Not talking at all. You will lose customers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this week, October uh, the 11th, we are uh, interested in you guys checking this out. And this is also has a devotional that you should be reading. It's four days each week, which uh, today's is really good, which we're recording this on Wednesday. Yeah. And today's the 7th, I think, October 7th. So yes. read that one. All right. Um, so walk us through some of the things that you've been thinking about, Josh, and you think it would be personable and important and impressionable and uh, applicable. I was trying to think of all the bubbles. Very good. Uh, so we are... Jumping into chapter two this week, so we can bounce off of what we've already gotten into some, and especially uh, this week from last week, we talked about loving one another and the idea of growth being something that we not only do individually, but we also do corporately. So together as the church, uh, that idea is going to be present this week as well as we get into uh, learning how to get a put off kind of that old nature, put on that new nature, uh, but serving others. So mm -hmm. getting away from being self-centered into looking at others uh, in, in a light that we can serve them and, and putting on good stuff. So right. in the realm of just doctrine theology, if you're going down those routes in your class, uh, what's already been talked about is salvation, so with the Reveal series, and then we're talking about sanctification, that growth right now. Uh, one of the things we want to definitely make sure is clear is that in this week's passage, you have the idea of growing up into salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, what we know of salvation is that it's not works based, it's by faith, it's, it's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. That's different from sanctification. The power of God is still working in us, the Holy Spirit is still driving us, uh, that life has been given to us, but growth is something we do cooperatively mm -hmm. with God. So we're growing uh, and we're working, uh, we're not gaining salvation, we already have that, but we're growing into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So we want to be sure to get that uh, very clear so we don't have confusion in class and, and uh, people go away saying we're heretics. Well, that's t f fun stuff. Yeah, so. like this is the part where like Paul talks about you're agreeing with what's been done. Yes. Like So we're like going through the process of like having our, or Paul says, beating our flesh into submission. Like Like we already have something that's been done for us and done in us and now we're trying to work that out or agree with it mm -hmm. and uh and, and so that's here and one of the ways that we do that is by consuming truth and consuming god's word and centering us around uh, other people who are connected to uh god's word and renew your mind. god's church yeah. right renew your mind and and so uh in this passage there are some key points that we want to be aware exist in all of us um deceitfulness, uh, I think fibbing, right? You're yes. saying fibbing. Where are some others? If you call that, yourself a liar, you can right. call yourself a fibber. You're still a liar, but you're lying about lying. Right, so, but it's, uh, it's just like a gentle lie. 
It's like I caught a fish this big, right? Yeah, you know, like, it's, just, it's a little sin. Like, versus, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's some other ones, right? Malice yes. was another one. Envy. Uh, envy. Uh, so stuff that tears us apart. How much does that shirt cost, man? I really like it. Uh, it's, there's stains yeah. on it. You can have it. Uh, <laughs> right? I mean, like, like, and it's little stupid stuff, right? Like, we're, yeah. like, and everybody goes to this. Right. Drama. We, we know drama these days. Right. So, if you yeah. have drama in, uh, on your television, that's not a soap opera. It, you're probably watching one of the major news channels. Yes. Or anything. Or anything. Really. It's, it's yeah. turn, the, turn the TV off. Put yeah. the electronics down. Go outside. Uh, breathe in air and don't punch anybody. Don't. I think punch. that's a good goal for 2020. 2020, yes. Yeah. And vote. Often, right? <laughs> early vote. Yeah. Right, early vote. <laughs> Go early vote just to avoid the crowds. Right. Because <laughs> so we have uh, opportunity for us to kind of connect this a little bit deeper. And, yeah. and one of the things that really struck me was this passage uh, about seeing this idea of a newborn kind of take on the desires of milk or or what their their mom is offering or food that's before them, how they just desire naturally to do that, how you and I desire naturally to do things, but we're trying to avoid those desires and chase after the desires of our heart, which are new because of Christ. And one of the ways that I thought was really good in here in our second uh, section right before the application is about midway down, it says, uh, uh, what a wonderful motivation, and this growth is an expected marker if we have tasted Peter here would insinuate that those who are stagnant, who do not grow, are still dead in trespasses and sin. We can understand this because we know that infants are motivated individuals. The desire of milk is perhaps the primary drive from the womb. Uh, and so one of the things that this really brought to mind and, and to me was this idea that, that if we haven't tasted or we haven't consumed, we haven't been brought before the glory of God or seen Him or understood His truth, we're not going to want it. Once you've tasted it, yeah. you really want that. I mean, that's that's a desire. It's like a it's like not just a brain thing. It's a heart thing. It's a desire thing. And when you're surrounded by God's people, you want the goodness of God more and more and more. And so unpack that a little bit and tell me how you kind of see that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's real clear imagery for us because we both have young kids right now. Mm -hmm. and, and if my baby daughter is upset and screaming, she's either sleepy, she's dirty, or she wants milk. That's right. Uh, you know, so we have this natural desire, even as, as human beings, we, we have to have something that's going to give us life and sustain us. And that's, uh, we need food, we need the milk, the baby's desire. Uh, so once we are saved, that life is in us and we are naturally inclined to pursue what we know, even instinctively, what we're motivated by the Holy Spirit to know that we have to take in sustenance on a spiritual level to grow. Uh, this is something we can see very clearly anytime we have somebody that is a new believer. Uh, you know, what we'll say, oh, they're a brand new believer. They're really on fire for God. They're taking in all of this stuff. Uh, I was at a church and saw this firsthand. There was an older gentleman that, that came to Christ and then all of a sudden he's taking in uh, books like he's a seminary student and just plowing through five, six, seven books a week. Uh, you know, theology and apologetics and all sorts of different stuff. And this is something we see time and again, is that once we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, there is a desire and we can't be kept from it. You know, baby's going to start screaming if they don't get milk long enough. If we have this life in us, we're going to have a desire that says, hey, we have to connect in with God. I have mm -hmm. to be reading the Word. I have to, to be part of uh, the body of Christ and growing into this. Uh, so there's, there's definitely a natural desire. And part of what we have both dealing relationally with one another in discipleship is the shift of natures. So mm -hmm. we have the front end of today's passage, uh, the stuff when you get rid of, that's divisive. But then we have this drive for new desires. It's the same as changing an unhealthy desire to a healthy mm -hmm. desire, an unhealthy habit to a good one. Yeah. You know, wake up in the morning and you want you know sweet stuff. You, you want to grab the donut and bacon and bacon and more bacon. Mm -hmm. uh, and we go after that stuff. Bacon. But, bacon. Uh, which we are allowed to have. Thanks be to God. Uh, but the healthier choice is probably water, fruit, some orange juice, that sort of thing. Right. Now, if we have had a lifetime of eating sugary stuff, that's where our, our you know, body is naturally going to be inclined. So it's a process. This isn't mm -hmm. a light switch. Uh, you know, you're not saved and then completely switched. The growth process goes over time. So we want to see those unhealthy habits, the waking up, getting the bad stuff, you know, to the healthy habit of waking up, getting the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is where we can help each other out. 
uh, if you're strong in an area that you're not tempted by, but you know like your brother, sister in Christ, friend in the group, is that's somewhere they struggle, you can help them out with that yeah. and then vice versa. They can help you in some area that you're weak and they're strong. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we have to be together. You know, so if you're a naturally inclined fibber, uh, your buddy can call you out on that. Yeah. And that way we are correcting each other in gentleness and love, but putting ourselves on the right track to grow into the likeness of Christ. No, that's good. That's good. And so one of the things you might be doing is you might be leading or you might be facilitating or you might be teaching a group where you've got some new believers and they are wondering, you know, what to do or how to do this. And you just come alongside them and say, hey, we're going to grow in Christ. And let's just go with the list that Peter gives right now. Let's just look at those things. How are those things in your life? Are you more like Christ? And uh, if you're looking for, if you've been a believer for a long time and you want a measuring stick, maybe you get out Galatians and you look at the fruits of the Spirit and you ask yourself a question, mm -hmm. am I a, a better forgiver? Or maybe like as Pastor Josh said last week, uh, you're looking at uh, the love passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and you look at that and say, hey, do I love like this? Is this mm -hmm. an example of my life? Depending on where you're at as and your maturity of Christian will kind of help give you a guise to like what you need to do. And if you're in a group and you've uh, been a believer a long time and there's no growth, and there's a lot of stagnation. There's just a lot of like, kind of just like, you know, we've just been Christians and we just accept it. You may have forgotten that we're supposed to be feasting on Christ. We're supposed to be tasting Him and enjoying Him. And so go back to that. Go back to the person of Christ. Go back to who He is. Go back to that chapter 1 of salvation over and over again as a reminder. That's the fuel for how we overcome these earthly desires and chase after the heavenly ones. All right. So uh, is there anything else, a last word or anything else you want to grab? Yeah, um, at the end of the day, if we're if we're walking through a group, it's always good to just have something really practical to apply at the end mm -hmm. of it. So if, if we're looking at ways to apply this, super simple this week, just think, say, hey, one habit that I want to shift from that unhealthy desire to a, a healthy desire. You know, turn the TV off and pray. Mm -hmm. uh, have have somebody if your class is looking for that, say, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Focus on that 15 minutes each and every day. Do that every day. You know, small step, but it's something that will get us moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, we want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. We want to know how this is beneficial. We've had like 31 people watch last week, so hopefully you'll catch this one and share it with your friends. If you want your class to watch it, if there's something you want to grab a hold of and bring into class, do that. Watch it before. And you can watch us any day of the week, even though it might post on a day that starts with T. Probably. Most likely Thursday, Thursday. Yes. And uh, if you, if you, uh, <laughs> if you are cool with that, we are glad to have you. And we would love to get some feedback, maybe comments, maybe questions you have. Maybe if you want to read ahead a little bit and say, hey, this is a question I have, or this is a scripture that we're going to bring up in class. Yeah. We want to help answer that to you too. And it couldn't be beneficial not just for you, but for other people. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you here next week. Bye.